Law, statutes, and commandments to the ones that fear him. But if you don't fear him, then it's not talking to you. But hopefully you'll hear this and take heed. Before it's too late. Psalms 37 and 9. Psalms 37 and 9. For evildoers shall be cut off. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Most High, while Mashiach Yahweh Shall they shall inherit the earth, but even do is gonna be cut off for yet for a little while. Say again, yes, and 10. Now, for yet for a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yeah, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. Now you know they're going to be done away with. The wicked are going to be done away with. They're going to be cut off. It said the wicked plotted against the just and gnashes upon him with his teeth. The most High shall laugh at him. He's going to laugh at him. He's going to laugh at the wicked. The most High shall laugh at him for he see it that his day is coming. <laughs> he see that the wicked day is coming to be cut off forever. So the wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. That's why I tell you right along with, with that is, is Revelations 12 and 17. The devil know that he have a short time which is the wicked what he says it's going to do. Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon, which is the devil, which is Satan, which is the wicked, which is Esau, which is the serpent. All of them are red. They say, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. The woman represents Israel when you read Jeremiah 6 and 2. And went to make war with the remnant, that's the one third of her seed, which keep the commandments of the Most High. And Amashiach Yahweh Shai. And have the testimony of Amashiach Yahweh Shai. So they will go to war with the remnant. That's why it tells you, it goes right along with what we're reading here. When you see in Psalms 34 and 14, it says, The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bow shall be broken when they come up against the one-third of the twelve tribes of Israel, the remnant. Okay? That's what you got to look at. But that's why I keep saying it's spiritual. And you have to have a relationship with the Most High, while Mashiach Yahweh Shai, Baha Shama Mashiach Yahweh Shai, for this to happen and materialize for you to be safe in the days to come. Going back to 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter. Start at verse 24. It says, Woe to them that sin, that break the commandments of the Most High, that break his laws, and keep not my commandments, said the Most High, said destruction to you. I will not spare them. So you can make excuses all you want to. He said, I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power, defile not my sanctuary. For the most I know of all them that sin against him, and therefore delivered he them unto death and destruction. So if you sin against the most high, you don't want to follow what he said. He's going to deliver you to death and destruction. For now, 
or the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. For the Most High shall not deliver you, because ye have sinned against him. That's clear. Say, behold an horrible vision, and the appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia, the Arabs, shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. That's what's going to happen, man. It's, it's happening right now. As the Most High is allowing these things to materialize, these prophecies to be fulfilled. All oh, that's about warfare. A lot of these things have happened. A lot of things going to happen in the future. That's why we have to prepare ourselves and not knowing there's going to be lack of bread and not be caught up in the things that our enemies have done to have us be ignorant. Understand that. Certain things have been done to have you be ignorant and to not know. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I'm still here. Looking at uh second Ezra sixteenth chapter. Verse one it says, Woe unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe means destruction. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack, cloths of sack and hair. Bewail your children and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. Like, you know, they're going to just try and destroy them. Say destruction is at hand. Right now, you know, it's a big old fight in Syria. A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you. That's destruction, destructive, destructing plagues, destructible plagues. And say, and what is he that may drive them away? Who is he that may drive them away? Excuse me. Or what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood? Or may anyone quench the fire and stubble when it has begun to burn? Say, how are you going to do this? Can't do this. Just by yourself, a hungry lion. We're not talking about you have no weapons of war or anything of that nature. But just by yourself, the lion by yourself, and you, you're a man by yourself, or you take fire and put it in the stubble. Like tumbleweeds, once it already started to burn, it's going to burn. So you may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. Can you turn that arrow back once, it, once he let it go? I'm talking about these missiles. It's going to be shot into the ends of the world. going to be shot into the ends of the world. It says, the mighty most high sent the plagues. And who is he that can drive them away? A fire shall go forth from his wrath. And who is he that may quench it? Once the Most High bring this fire on this earth, who's going to quench it? Who's going to put it out? He shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? The Most High shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? The earth quaketh 
and the foundation thereof. The sea arises up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Most High, and before the glory of his power. For strong is his right hand, represents the Mashiach Yahweh How do you prove that the right hand is the Mashiach Yahweh Shai? Con. Very good. For strong is his right hand that beneath the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. It's going to happen. Now, how you prepare yourself for this is spiritual. You can take this as Alice in Wonderland, Cat in a Hat, or whatever book you read, or the Vibe magazine, or the Ebony, or the Jet if you want to. You better come back to your senses and realize this is real. This is the real deal. This is the realest deal ever to be real. Right here, nothing more powerful than the truth. Nothing. I better understand what he's saying. He said, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returned of not backwards. When, you, when that mighty archer shoots that arrow, it's not, when he shoot it, pull it back as hard as he can and let it go. It ain't coming back this way. It's going straight forward. So when these missiles are shot in the end of this earth, say like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer return if not backwards, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. Once he sent them on the earth, they come. They're not going to return back to him. Say, woe is me. Ezra say, woe is me. Destruction to me. Destruction to me. Who will deliver me in those days? He wonder who's going to deliver him in those days. Now you know what? Ezra know that he's going to be here during the time of this end. Of this present world that we're in now. Let me get it right. This present evil, wicked world that we're in now. Because he's asking who's going to deliver him in those days. That's reincarnation right there. That's regeneration right there. Why would he say that? If he in the ground. If his spirit is just done away with. Y'all see that? He said, what was me? What was me? Who will deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mornings. The beginning of famine. That's food shortages, y'all. And great death. A whole lot of people going to die. That's why they're trying to get rid of. You got 7 million people on approximately 7 million, million people on the earth. They want to get rid of 6.5 billion people. Hmm. That's why without our... Relationship with the Most High, we have no, we have no chance. Cause they can get us through the water. You got you need water. Get us through the food, through the air, through our clothes. I read to told you how they put things in our clothes, material. I mean, they put in like you think Safeway would be the safest. Some of the safest food to eat. When they come to find out, checking them out, it's not the, the actual food, it's the bread. They put in something that they make the soles of shoes in the bread. I mean, they just put ingredients in. I mean, nobody make no, we don't make no bread with no chemical that you make soles of your shoes with. For what? What's the significance in that? You just take some flour and 
baking soda and sugar and milk and mix it together and egg and mix it together. You got something nice. Why? I mean, you know, it's just greedy. It's, it's, it, it takes up volume. They put things in, I think, to, to take up the volume so they can have more. I'll just put that in there, you know. I'll give it. You got, you got some waste over there? Toxic waste? Oh, don't worry about it. Get it here. We'll just put it in this here. This batch. Put it in the batch, you know. Roll it all together. I'll tell you what. All y'all drink Pepsi and Coke. Boil it in some water. Boil, I mean, boil it in the pot. Don't put the water in. Just boil Take the Pepsi or the Coke. Put it in the, um, a pot and boil it. See what happens. And drink that. <laughs> you know, you have hot tea. Yeah, boil that Pepsi and let it keep on boiling. And boil it and boil it and see what happens with it. And see if you can eat that. That'll show you what you put inside you. Verse 18, second Ezra 16 and 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mournings. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear. So all the leaders going to stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do? He said, ever said, what shall I do when these evils shall come? So he asked him, what should he do when the evils shall come? What's he going to do? What is that saying? He's saying what he's going to do, he's going to be here. In his spirit, he feels he's going to be here. When these evils come. But he's not going to know who he is. Because there's no remembrance of former things. But let me get something right quick for you here in the Apocrypha, in the Ezra, so that he knew. Um, I'm going to go to second Ezra, the um, first chapter. I'm going to start at verse 35. It says, your houses will I give to a people that shall come. There it is right there. Just us now. So here we are in these houses of the, the people that was before us. Which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me. Not, not having heard of the Most High, yet we're going to believe, have faith in the Most High. To whom I have showed no signs, yet they shall do that I have commanded them. See, they're going to, there's a certain remnant, the one third, that's going to do what the Most High commands us to do. His law, follow his law, statutes, commandments. Even though we haven't seen any signs, we're going to do what he say do. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance. Hear that? Call your sins to remembrance. That's in repentance. And you ask for forgiveness of your sins. And acknowledge them. You have to acknowledge them. That's why I say, like we were saying earlier about, we were talking about the days of the week. First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day. If you have to use these other names, like at work or wherever you, you know, you take care of your business and you have to deal with that, you have to repent. Ask for forgiveness of your sins. If you know you blatantly are doing something that's against the laws of the Most High, acknowledge that law that you have broken and tell the Most High you're sorry. Apologize to the Most High. In the name of the Lord and Savior. See, I take to witness the grace of the people to come. So the, the grace of the people to come are the Israel, because the grace and mercy is only with the children of Israel. You see, I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. 
and though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirits, that's what I keep telling y'all, about in the spirit. This is spiritual. But in the spirit, yet in the spirit, they believe the things that I say. You got to believe in what he's saying. And now, brother, behold, what glory, and see the people that cometh from the east, unto whom I will give for leaders, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hosea, Amos, and Micah, Joel, Ob Ob Obadiah, and Jonas, Nahum, Rebekah, Zephaniah, Zechariah, and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Most High, or messenger, or minister of the Most High. So, he's letting us know that these men would come back on the earth as leaders. But understand this, we don't know who they are. Some men calling, calling on, you know, saying that they, they are a certain person of old. But clearly we don't know who they are. It tells us in uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, and the um, fourth verse, Ecclesiastes 1 and 4, it says, One generation passes away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Let you know a generation is on this earth, and another generation comes forth. And the earth about it forever, so we have to have an earth to come on, to be born unto. Jump into verse 9. It says, the thing that have been is that which shall be. So it tell you the thing that have been in the past is that which going to be in the future. Shall be is the future. And that which is done is that which shall be done. So whatever you do or what has been done in the past is that's what's going to be done in the future. And there is no new thing under the sun. So, you're not new. That's what it says. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. It has been already of old time. It's already been of old time. It's not something new. So it's been already of old time. In the past. Which was before us. It was here before we lived. But it comes back key. A key point right here. It says, this is, excuse me, there is no remembrance of former things. It's, here it is. There is no remembrance of former things. One more time for understanding. See, there is no remembrance of former things. Neither should there be any remembrance of of things that are to come with those that shall come after. So there's no remembrance of things that's going to come in the future of those that might come after us or that we came on the earth and would have no remembrance of former things or who you were in another lifetime before. That's why he said he's going to give us leaders, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is called also an angel. An angel is a minister. When you read Psalms 104 and 4, he ministers. So what does a minister do? He brings forth the word of the Most High. Psalms 104 and 4. Who make of his angels spirits. So it might say angel, it might say, say spirits. His minister is a flaming fire. So his minister is a flaming fire. That fire is what? The word of the Most High. So a minister what? It brings forth the word of the Most High. That's why it says these men would be as angels or spirits. But what are they going to do? They're going to bring the word of the Most High. But people don't really understand because... They're not spiritual. That's why I said when you're spiritual, then you'll understand what he's saying. But you can't, a carnal mind not going to understand this because it's got to be logically sound because you've been Edomonized. You've been demonized. And them demons won't allow you to 
grasp what it is to be spiritual and to fight your carnal against the spirit. So this fire says, who maketh his angels, spirits, his ministers, a flaming fire. What is this fire? Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like as a fire, the Most High said the Most High, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? So his word is like fire. So that's what the ministers or the angels are bringing forth. And don't get it twisted because look at Hebrews 13 and 2. Just food for thought. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Hebrews 13 and 2. For thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Not even knowing. Or ministers of the Most High's word. Unawares. Let's look at people as everyday people. And not even know him. Not even recognize him. Sad to say, but it's true. That's why it's important that we apply these scriptures in our life. Apply, apply, apply. So you learn it. You live it. You got to apply it. In your life. Very, very important. The application of how you live your life and go through these scriptures and allow them to penetrate every fiber of your being before it's too late. Because they have a plan to take us out if they can. We read it. And we got to come out of this darkness that we're in. That's why Isaiah 5 and 20. Because the, to the best of your ability, you have to follow the Most High's law, statute, and commandments, which the Spirit had me to say, the Most High's rules and regulations, because people understand rules and regulations. Con? Because you're following the way of the heathen. We all have rules and regulations. You think you have no rules and regulations? Don't pay your rent. Don't pay your car note about three, four months. Don't pay your electric bill. Don't pay your, your, your credit cards. Don't pay nothing. See what happens. Go to the store. And get whatever you want. See if you can. <laughs> Can't do it. Everything has rules and regulations. Everything. Isaiah 5 and 20. It says, Woe me destruction unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's like you you opposite of where you should be. You say destruction to you. Whoa, destruction is them that call evil good. You know, the most I say don't call on the names of these gods. Oh, I got to do it. Okay, well, you got to do it. Do it. But don't tell everybody else that it's okay to do it. Don't call everybody else to sin. That's calling evil good. So y'all y'all justify 
breaking the laws of the Most High for, you, for, you, for your condition here in hell and think it's okay with the Most High because you in hell, you in, you in captivity? You don't think you have to repent? You don't think you have to humble yourself before the Most High and ask Him for forgiveness? Anyone out there? So I say destruction to you that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. He's screaming us at you. This exclamation point. So when you look at, come on, it's, it's sad because our people so infeminine, men are infeminine and women love See, they kind of program with this infeminine type of vibration that the men have that when a real man comes out with this, Isaiah 58 and 1, cry aloud, spare not. Say, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. What he said. He said, cry aloud. If you lift up your voice like a trumpet, you mean you speaking loud. It's like he's hollering at us right here in Isaiah 5 and 20. It says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. He said, destruction to you. What's evil? Anything contrary to the laws of the Most High, the word of the Most High. He said, do this, you don't do it, that's evil. Ain't no excuses, okay? you can't say it's okay. It's not okay, brothers and sisters. It's not okay. It's sad. But it's true. Going back to Isaiah 5 and 20. It says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. 